from Limerick to Germany and on Zoom this morning. Claire, it's lovely to have you and had to be speaking to you this morning. Thanks very much for having me. Delighted to be on with you. How has life been in lockdown? First of all, you were at home for the lockdown in Limerick. Yeah, I was. Um, luckily enough, before everything kind of closed up shop, I was originally in Montenegro with the Irish team and flew back to Germany because we were all getting back uh, to our clubs, getting ready to resume the seasons. But uh, yeah, things kind of looked like there was going to be maybe a, a halt in life for a little bit. So I had a few days off anyway from um, training. So I decided that I was going to fly home anyway for my few days. And then if I had to come back to resume training, no problem, that was going to be done. But um, thankfully, I made the right decision and I was in the right place at the right time when everything kind of happened. Yeah, was it nice to be at home with the family? How did you, how did you find being at home with them? Yeah, it was it was so nice to be honest with you because I hadn't been home like for that length of time in years. Uh, my sister even made a comment that she hadn't seen so much of me since I lived with her when I was going to school. Um, so it was really nice to be able to spend more time um, with my parents, my sister, my nieces, and even though we had the social distancing rules at home. Um, I was still able to see a friend, you know, from a distance, you know, call up to outside the house or, you know, even go and see um, like my aunt and things like that. And just going out, sitting on the wall and just having the chats and, you know, just keeping everything going really. And it was really nice to be able to see everyone um, and spend a little bit of time with them in that sense. I mean, you're a professional footballer. So what was it like trying to keep the fitness regime together being at home? Yeah, Obviously, when um, being football, a team sport, you do a lot of your training um, with other players and with the coaches. But during the lockdown period, I found myself training by myself individually, which can be challenging itself at times. Um, I wouldn't be a big enthusiastic about going running, but... Um, no, I found I found it I found it fine. Um, I had great use of um, a local pitch in the town, Newcastle West Town. They have really nice facilities up there, and I was able to go up to the pitch and and do a session. And even my sister has gym equipment out in the shed and everything like that. So I was able to use them and just keep myself taken until um, training resumed back here in Germany. Now, you're from Newcastle West, and I, I don't know, do you know, but I, for years I uh, worked in a clothes shop there called Morin's. Do you remember the shop? You used to probably get a school uniform there. I, I for sure did. I was in there. I used to dread having to go in every, every year, having to get my shirts and my uniform, my pinafore. <laughs> I feel like I probably could have sold you your school uniform at some stage. I'm a that bit older than you. <laughs> I apologise for my mother. She can be very specific at times, but... No, look, it was nice to have you home and obviously the family enjoyed having you home as well. But before you started your I suppose, journey to being a professional footballer, you did, you were a dual county star. I was, yeah. I um, I grew up playing GAA, so I was playing camogie, I was playing Gaelic football. Um, I even started playing with, with the boys, um, even mixing it with the girls and things like that. So I had a bit of hurling in me as well. But I loved it. I loved it so much. And soccer was actually probably the last sport that I took on um, because my family is so GA orientated. Um, I had to take it upon myself to, to start the soccer. And I had to start that with the boys as well. So I got into the thick of it at yeah, an age of you started quite late, which is, you know, for a lot of people, they might start really young and work their way up, but you started late and you still managed to get there as well. Tell us about your, your starting the professional career, well, starting out. So I have two, this, this, I'm finishing my second season now um, in Duisburg, MSV Duisburg. Um, so originally, two years ago, I would have been playing my football with Reduce women's team in the Women's National League. And we were very successful, thankfully. And um, obviously being uh, involved with the Irish women's senior team, I saw a lot of the players who were playing professionally and I saw the, the standard and the level that they were at. And 
for me, I always kind of wanted to see, could I get to the next stepping stone? Mm. I never really thought that it might have been an option for me. Um, but, you know, you set yourself a goal and you, you try and achieve it. And it took a little bit of time, but thankfully with um, the help and the resources that were provided to me, I was able to come over here to Germany and kickstart my uh, professional career. So it's been really enjoyable so far. It's been very, very challenging, but um, I've taken it on and I won't stop yet anyway. Yeah, before we go on and talk more about Germany, what was it like? What was the stepping stone like when you went from Wexford Youth first to international? To international? The biggest thing really for me was the amount of trainings that you do um, in a camp. So you could be in a camp for seven to ten days and more often than not you'll be training nearly every day. And going from amateur level to that, it's a big ask on the body when you mightn't be physically fit enough to be able to continue all those trainings mm -hmm. consistently day in, day out. And it takes a, a toll on the body because it's such a change. But yeah, so that was, that was probably a big thing for me that I, I saw that I was fatigued almost coming towards a game day. You know, I wasn't going to be 100% for it. So I knew myself that where I was at physically wasn't good enough. So I made the decision then, um, probably before, just before I, I became professional over here in Germany to only solely focus on, on my training below in Wexford. And even so in Limerick, when I was living at home, I was going training with the Limerick SC boys, the under 17s and the under 19s. And at the time I was playing as a striker and even playing with those guys at, at their League of Ireland standard and being boys, it's very diff it's very challenging. But I found myself to be able to compete with them. And gradually I, I got towards a stepping stone where I was able to be more consistent with my training. And that really stood to me. And thankfully after the first season of being a professional, it took a lot of time for the body and the mind to adapt to all the demands that it takes. So I've really kind of come into it now this season. You know, you, you need a little bit of time just to figure out how everything works for you as an individual um, in terms of your sleeping and your diet and, and things like that. So it took time, but thankfully I think I'm at a stage now where I have it fine-tuned and I'm on, I'm on a good path. Good, you have the balance now. So you're probably, were you spotted from your Ireland days or your Wexford Duke days? So it would have been, it probably would have been with my Ireland days uh, because my former head coach, Colin Bell, was a link for me to come over to Germany because he knew the coach here in, in Duisburg. So even though I was playing as an attacker in Ireland, Colin saw me as a as a central defender and even though I, I was still playing as a striker he he played me two games against Norway as a center back where I had never played a competitive game even in the women's national league as a center back but yeah so then when I was coming over to Germany it was just center back center back was, what was it like making the positional switch for you like were you open to it or were you a bit like oh leave me there, I want to take on the goals, you know, what were you like? I'll be honest with you, um, it's a love-hate relationship. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> at the start, I was like, I was like, I'm a striker, but for me, playing and being part of the Irish squad, it's such an honour and it's such a privilege and, and that's what I ultimately am working towards. Whatever... I can do to help I'll do it so if that means that I have to change position okay I'll take it on the chin and I'll do it <laughs> but it's been a really positive learning curve for me because my knowledge has increased massively um, I've gotten to learn a lot more about strikers because I have to defend against them but obviously from the defending side of things you know I've obviously I've had to learn a lot on the job as well 
So yeah, it's been it's been good so far. I have found myself kind of creeping back up top a little bit now in the last game or two. Like even even in the last night's game, eighty third minute, we're a goal down. I said, Coach, can I go up top? He said, Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, wait till the end. So I think maybe for three or four minutes I went up at the end and I just caused a little bit of havoc, you know, just trying to get on the end of balls and putting someone through and just give the defenders a little bit bit of hardship you know that's something that I've always kind of enjoyed and done well enough so um yeah I think slowly I'm creeping back up there a little bit but you know it's good to be able to have another string to your bow so I can't yeah. complain too no like you'd be very attractive to management I think if you can do both yeah well that's another side of things but you know it's just for example if I were to ever go back as a striker you know a coach is going to need footage of me playing as a striker and it's all well and good maybe getting four or five minutes up top and you can maybe do a little bit but imagine doing that being able to do that for 45 minutes for a half or, or a full 90 you know actually be in the thick of it and get the flow back as a striker that obviously would take a little bit of time as well but the minutes the minutes will increase I hope yeah, definitely. Because I, I can tell you're mad to get back there anyway. I'd say striker is where you'd really want to be like. <laughs> you said it, no, not me. <laughs> you mentioned the game last night. You don't want all draws to even other points to your system. Yeah, so we've had a pretty good uh, return to play results. Um, we kicked off, uh, resumed the season against Bayer Leverkusen there on Saturday just gone and we had a, a good positive 2-0 win. So it was really important to get three more points on the board. And then last night, um, different game, different opposition. And I think we were lucky enough to come out with the one-all draw um, at full time. So another important point um, to keep Cologne at bay a little bit behind us. So we're on level points with Leverkusen at the moment, um, tying in ninth position. So we'll just keep taking it game game by game and just look to hopefully try and get a positive result. We've we haven't been beaten now in four games. Um before the break we had two draws and just before the international break we actually played Bayern Munich, which will be a top team over here. Yeah. And they always feature in the women's champions league and they always seem to come in second in our league because Wolfsburg always just seem to be staying at the top. They they're just they just ha can't seem to be caught. Um, so that was a really, really big result for us against a top team. And morale was really, really high after that. I was afraid that we might take a little bit of a dip um, because of the break. But I think it actually did a lot of players really, really good. Um, and we've gotten straight back into things. And morale is just keep getting higher and higher. And so hopefully we can just keep that going now for each game as it comes and just keep fighting towards the end of the season. Like, I can tell you, you're obviously really enjoying it out there. Was it an easy decision for you to head out? I mean, what were you 23 when you first moved out? Yeah, I would have been. Um, it, was, it was an easy decision, to be honest with you, because, you know, not everyone can say that they play professional football. So I was gladly welcoming the move. Um, obviously, I was, I was sad um, leaving West Virginia's women's team because... What we achieved over there, over the few seasons that I was there, was amazing. Like, and memories I will never, ever forget. And playing with the players that I've played with and the coaches that I've had, you know, they've made a massive impact on my career to date. And they still do. And, um, yeah, it was, really, it was really sad. But I knew that, you know, I had to come to the next chapter of my footballing career and go on a new journey. So... I, I was really looking forward to it and yeah, I was I was itching to make the move. And what were the players like? Were they accepting when you came out or did you get on with everybody? Did it take you a while to be part of that team? In Germany? Yeah. Um yeah, girls are great. Um there's some real characters in, in the squad. Obviously the biggest thing over here is the banter is a little bit different. Okay. So that has taken a, a minute to kind of get used to, but um, yeah, we have we have great fun and all the girls are great. And you know, even when 
I'm speaking in German to them. Well, when I try, you know, and trying to learn and things like that, you know, they're really helpful. And, you know, I do learn an awful lot from them. So you do learn an awful lot from playing with different types of players and coming from different parts of the world as well. So it's, it's been really, it's been really good and enjoyable. Uh, Now, don't get me wrong. It's been very challenging a lot of the times, you know, but, um, yeah, it's it's been good, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been able to come over here. You picked up a bit of German, as you mentioned. Are you a bit fluent? Can you have a conversation, or are you like just a few words here and there? The most difficult thing about the German language is building the sentences. I know a lot of lo- a lot of words, okay. and I build a sentence based on my English sentences. Yeah. Correct. So I'm just like, I just short and sharp, short and sharp, whatever I need to say, it's in short form. And they know it. They know anyway what you're trying to say. So yeah, they do, course. they do get a bit of a giggle out of me every now and then because of the incorrectness of it, the whole thing. But we get on with it anyway. Yeah, you're learning. But look, come here. The Bundesliga probably was the first sport in the world to resume after COVID-19. What has it been like to return to this now? I mean, when you went back out, how how were things different? I suppose the only differences I can I can see um, in everyday life over here is that when you go out in public, if you're going to the store to do your food shopping, or if you're going into a cafe or a restaurant or anything like that, you have to wear your masks at all times. Obviously, if you're going in to sit down, you don't need to wear the mask because you're in your own mind area. But when you're speaking to the workers or anything like that, masks are always on and there's always hand sanitizer to be using. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest thing over here um, that we've had to adapt to everyday life. In terms of football, then, um, the change is we kind of have to keep the distance in the lead up to the training session in terms of coming in, um, keeping our distance within the training centre, in in the dressing rooms and things like that. And also we have to get tested two to three times a week for the COVID-19 to be able to continue the games. We also had to do a a one-week quarantine in a hotel to the lead up to the first game. So all last week we were in a hotel and we could only leave if we were going to training. Um, so they're not the most enjoyable tests to, to do, but over in a couple of seconds, so it's not too bad. You don't mind as long as the outcome is that you're able to play, but being tested three times a week is a lot, but as you said, you don't mind if you get to play. Exactly, you know, it's for the right reasons that we're being tested. Um, so we just, we do it and we get on with it and then we get ready for game day. It's been a lot now with this English week because they're obviously we have game midweek, so we have to make sure that we're doing our tests more regularly. Um, but I think maybe once we come back to a game on the weekends, that it'll just be twice a week. You've such a quick turnaround. Do you have another game Saturday? Sunday. So we played last night, Thursday, and today's a free day. Um, so we'll just get our recovery in, and then tomorrow we're in um, for a lot session and some analysis and then we'll be back on the pitch on Sunday against Sand. The day of the day of training, what's it typically like for you? What time do you get up? Have you a certain like are you in there a lot of hours during the day? Um so it depends really if you have a double day or not. Um to be honest with you, re- usually um I'd almost nearly have a double day every day okay. uh, because I'm not training two times with the team. I'm going to the gym, doing a session in the morning or the afternoon, and then going to the evening session. So I'd usually wake up. I'm waking up a lot earlier now since um, I've been at home. But I just get up, I'd have my coffee, breakfast, and then I'd get ready to go to training, um, do my session, come home, shower, eat, recover, and then just go again. And then once the evening session's kind of done, you're coming home, and you're having your last bite to eat and you're heading off to bed, you might chat to the family or a few friends on the phone or something. But yeah, it's kind of, it's fairly repetitive, the days. But And then on the free days, you know, you have the opportunity to 
go out for a coffee or you can go for a meal or you know just go spend some time with some teammates or or something like that or just go for a drive you know check out the scenery around um those days are can be a bit long but I, I try and keep as active as possible so I just can't really seem to sit still since I've come back I'm just like even if I'm the apartment for a half an hour I was like okay I have to go out for a walk now just walk up to the bridge and have a look and come back down maybe ring a friend or something like that and are you living with someone you know or are you living by yourself so um my teammate is from New Zealand and oh. um, here she was she was actually gone for the first half of the season because before her first world cup game she ruptured her Achilles so she had to do a lot of recovery, um, which she did in New Zealand. But she came back just before Christmas. So it's been nice having her back. So, you know, we can have the banter here in the apartment or we can do some stuff and go out for coffee or whatever. Good. At least you have some bit of company and not there yourself. But it's lovely that you're back and that the Bundesliga is back and it's giving everyone here at home, you know, an opportunity to watch live sports, which is hopefully soon it'll resume here in Ireland. But... Do you think that we're a bit slower in Ireland to kind of start back the games? Or are you like, no, let you be slow? Well, if you think about it, like the processes that have been uh, put in place for the society in Ireland to get back, it mm. is slow. But, you know, there there's a concept why it is, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I think in a way it's the right decision. Calling a spade a spade you know, when sport does resume and things like that. Sport in Ireland isn't professional, so the big question mark is, like, how are they going to do that? How are they going to monitor players not contracting the virus and spreading it? You know, will will they offer tests to the players once or twice a week? You know, because here, obviously, being in a professional environment and it being a regulation for games to continue, it has to be done. But there's a big question mark of how it'll be handled back home in Ireland, you know. If you were a player not professional at home now at Wexford, would you be happy to go back playing without that setup, without the tests, without the regulations? You see, it's a difficult situation because if you're not going to be tested and you don't know who's going to get it or who's not, the reality is is you could pick it up on yourself and go home and you could give it to someone around you who'd be vulnerable to it, you know? Yeah. What, are, what are we supposed to do? Stay away from, like, family and friends until there might be a vaccine created? Yeah. So it's a difficult situation. I, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer on it. Uh, like, obviously, for me, if there's training going on, if there's a set date, I'll be there, do you know? But it's the aftermath of what may or may not happen is the big question mark. Speaking of home and Ireland, I know that the um, the finals were pushed out to 2022, but she have received confirmation and a bit of clarity about the qualifiers, which is, the, I think, the 19th of September is your qualifiers? So the first game is against Germany away in September, yeah. So it was really nice for, for us to get the, the fixtures because now we can start planning towards those. Um, so we've three big games left. Two of them are against Germany, who are top of the group, and Ukraine uh, will be the second game away. So that loss will be a really tough game. So it's three tough games that we've left to play, but we found ourselves in a good position in the group. Um, so we want to stay there, and we just want to finish as high as possible, and and hopefully, possibly maybe get that playoff that we'll be hoping for. Um, Obviously, with the games being pushed back a year, you know, it kind of delays everything. But at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to maybe get more trainings in uh, with the team and the coach and get more competitive, friendly games in. So with every negative comes a, a positive. I That's the way I'd look at it. Yeah, at least you have a positive outlook on it. I mean... Even at that, you could get a better profile for the game. How do you feel like the support and media coverage has been on women's football in Ireland? I think the support and the media coverage is growing, um, which is really positive. And when it's coming to game day for the women's games, whether it's in, in football or 
or GA or rugby or, or whatever code it is, I think we are getting a, a, a bit more coverage. Obviously, I think that there's still a big, a big gap that we can try and close a little bit. But it's a stepping stone, you know, that we're on and we just kind of have to get everyone on the same page and hopefully we can keep working towards that and, and the people who are, are responsible for doing that are doing a really good job so far in building towards it and I have no doubt that they can keep going in the right direction. Yeah, no, it's been it's been you know, a learning curve for us in the media as well to be able to not acknowledge that we do need to cover more. So I think it's important that we have started to acknowledge that we do. But um, hopefully the next time you're home and in your Limerick, you might be able to come into the studio to us. Yeah, definitely, 100%. I'd love that. When everything calms down. But it was lovely chatting to you this morning. And I wish you all the best in your professional career. And I can't wait to follow you and see what happens for you. Thanks very much. And for having me on, it's been great. Spin Southwest.